There's been a major update on the firmware modding and also customization of this radio. I was informed by Matt, um, who's Matt? I don't know, but Matt sent me an email. He said, hey, you can modify the UVK5 and put your own custom firmware and patch it on using just a web browser, a Chrome-based web browser. So I'm using Google Chrome here. You can also do this, I believe, on Microsoft Edge as well because that also is Chrome-based. Um, and basically go to this website. There'll be a link in the description below and you can go through and select what modifications you want. Uh, it also works on the UVK6, UVK58. I think that they're the same model radio. They're pretty much almost the same as the UVK5 and also the UV5R Plus handheld radio, which I think again is another Quan Chang variation. So all you need is a web browser and a programming cable. And I've got the Baofeng programming cable here. So what we're gonna do is load some of this firmware in and see how it goes. So basically what you do is you go through this web page and you select the desired modifications and you customize as you require. On the right side of the panel, which I'll show you here soon, you can select your radio, but you can also patch it for all radios, which creates a universal firmware, which bypasses the version check. You patch it, you watch the output, look for errors, and uh, basically, oh, if you get an oversized warning, then you need to deselect some mods because there's only so much memory available. You click save and uh, download. Now, that's downloading the firmware and flashing using the original tool, but I know that a lot of people have emailed me and said that they can't flash this radio anymore because the tool is not available. Uh, Quan Cheng updated it at some point and they were unable to load the uh, hacked firmware, for instance, that allows the expandable frequency coverage. So they couldn't uh, load that into the radio because of that. However, this new um, web page, which basically uses a thing called Web Serial, which is built into these modern Chromium browsers, Chrome Edge, etc., allow you to flash it directly to the radio using just the web browser. So this is pretty cool. There are also some hidden mods as well, which are available. These are the ones which, again, it lists here for safety reasons. Don't use them out of band, for instance, here, mainly transmit mods, etc., like that. We've been through those before um, on the channel, and uh, but you can click here and that basically opens them up. So you can do that. Okay, so let's close down the instructions and have a look at see what mods are actually available. Battery icon changes the battery icon to more looking variant. So we could check that out. You can change the LCD contrast as well if you think that that doesn't quite look how you want it. You can change the font. There's kind of what the font kind of looks like. As, so you can change this change this font so it looks a little bit better. Disable frequency copy timeout, prevents the frequency copy and CTCSS decoder from timing out, scan fail. Um, that's okay, I've done a video or in one of my videos talking about the frequency copy uh, function of these radios. Disable TX completely, making it purely a receiver. That could be, you know, interesting. You might want that if you just want to use it as a receiver or you're going to give it to someone and then don't have any intentions of transmitting. Enable TX everywhere. Of course, we've covered this before, but don't transmit on frequencies that you're not allowed on. Enable TX everywhere except airband. So again, d enabling transmit everywhere. This radio, I haven't tested what it's like out of band on every single frequency. It's, it's very low in output power and it's going to be putting harmonic spurs all over the place. So it's probably not going to work that well, but it can transmit on the airband. So that's what this is for, just to stop that um, stop that transmitting on airband. But again, you do this at your own risk and do not transmit on any illegal frequencies. So you can also change the backlight duration. I know that the backlight on this radio times out pretty quickly, so we might actually tick that one. That one sounds like an interesting one. Skip the boot screen and go instantly to the main screen on the power up. That's probably actually a very good one because it does take a little while to, once you turn it on, you know, it's about a second, but you might want to not have that. So let's skip the boot sc uh, screen. Uh, changes text in the settings menu. This displays blah, blah, blah. I'm not quite sure what that is, but oh, okay. So it looks like you can go in here and you can change stuff. I don't know. Change what the text is. This one's very interesting to me, increase mic gain. Some of these Chinese radios, of course, they are a little bit low in their audio. So I'm kind of interested to see what kind of difference this makes. Uh, you can also change, invert the colors on the display. And I just refer back to this screenshot here. 
Uh, where is it? There, it? there it is. You can invert the colors so that they look a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but that's kind of what it looks like if you want to increase or decrease the readability depending on what you want. Roger beep. So you can change the Roger beeps here. So this uh, radio has two. It has a standard Roger beep and then also has the, what is it, the Motorola beep bop, um, whatever it is tone in it i think as well i'm not going to worry too much about that one rssi this is again another mod which has been done in firmware which has already been pre-packaged but you can tick this on and off depending on how you want it so this adds a battery voltage readout in the status bar and also replaces the signal strength meter with an rssi readout which is a lot more handier you can select either an s meter or an rssi graph so um, I'm just going to go the uh, S meter. SWD. If you don't know what SWD is, you don't need this mod. Cool. <laughs> um, larger frequency range. So this is, again, the frequency uh, receive frequency unlock. So this doesn't change the transmit, but this basically unlocks it so that you can receive all the way from 18 megs up to 1300 megs, which um, I've done a video on before as well. Changing the frequency steps. So there's lots of different frequency steps here. Um, some people had issues with getting onto certain frequencies because they didn't go in and change the frequency step i think that was more related to the 6.25 kilohertz here so you can change that depending on what you want now this is another cool one this is the NOAA frequency so as you would know on this radio it has a NOAA button which is button number five which you can select to listen to the NOAA weather channels if you're in the united states um, it also scans in the background but as it rightly points out here, most people don't need the weather alerts or they don't have NOAA in the country, which is where I am as well. So what you can do is you can set up these frequencies for something else, maybe a, a, treat it as like a priority scan group where you can select certain frequencies that you really want to listen to and you want to know if something's going on. Um, so you can add these in here and then it will um, scan in the background as well. So that's a handy little feature that you can turn on and overwrite those if you need to. And also AM receiving on all of the bands. So the uh, original firmware only receives AM on the air band, but you can allow this to work on any other band as well. So uh, scrolling back up to the top here too, you can also contribute mods as well. So you can click on that and uh, go in here and and make some suggestions about mods that you would like let's go through patching this radio so i've got my baofeng cable so all i'm going to do is i'm going to plug that directly into my pc and it's given me a com port of com 7 so what i want to do is i want to patch for the uvk5 and i want to patch firmware cool now i need to Follow the instructions. <laughs> okay, connect the programming cable, which I've done. It should install as a COM port on your radio. Hold down the PTT button. So PTT button here on the side and turn the radio on. Now the flashlight is on, so that's cool. Connect the programming cable. So we connect that to the mic and the speaker port here on the side. Click flash directly and just wait for the process to finish. Okay, so let's go flash directly and it wants to connect to one of these com ports okay cool uh com7 connect and no data received is the radio connected and in flash mode i believe it is let's go again just in case version check failed please select the correct version aborting okay so it might be to do with this using stock version 26 firmware which i might not be so let's deselect that ah oh, because i'm not using the stop firmware i'm actually using some sort of hacked firmware on this so it turns out that you can download the updater software here it's actually i didn't see that it's actually updated or it's actually downloaded here so what i've done is i've extracted that now and here is the i guess the stock firmware so what i probably need to do is i need to load this stock firmware on first and then i can start to uh, play around with it so let's go and do that and flashing stock firmware i realized what it was is previous videos i've used this radio i i think i used some other mods on it so i'm not quite sure what firmware i'm actually running on this at the moment but the best thing to do is just download that software from the github um, site here who's matt's github and then let's go back to the original firmware which we did we're definitely using the stock firmware this time Flash directly, COM7, and still 
please select the correct version. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I had some problems before opening it up in my Chrome browser. So I've opened it up in an incognito window here and it seems to be flashing okay now. So that's nearly up to 100%. And we're successful. So it boots up pretty much straight away now. So that's good. That's the first mod that we selected. Backlight duration and you can already see that it's now, there we go, it took probably about 10 seconds. Also two battery. So we've got battery voltage. So that's a little bit more easier than just the little battery icon there. So 7.98 volts. Uh, RSSI meter. Okay, let's have a look here. Just trigger this and look at that. We got our RSSI meter. So I'm going to do a non-scientific test with the increased mic gain mod. So let's just see what kind of difference it's actually made. This is the unmodified radio, which is the K8, and this is the modified radio. So what I'm going to do is dial up my all-star node, which has a parrot system on it, so I can listen to my transmit audio to also tell me what the audio level quality is like. So I'm going to hold the radio's about the same distance away, speak in the same volume, and uh, we'll just see what it comes back as. Unmodified radio, no mic gain. VK7HH testing, one, two, three, four, five. Audio level is normal. VK7HH testing, one, two, three, four, five. So now let's do the modified version and see what that sounds like. VK7HH testing one, two, three, four, five. That's how I'd normally talk if I was on air. Audio level is just about right. Okay. VK7HH there we go. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Now, not only did I notice that when you receive, you get a bar graph, but it seems like with this mod, when you transmit, you also get a transmit bar graph as well, which shows you up and down the modulation as you're talking. So. That's pretty cool as well. This is the other alternative here. This is the UV Mod Kitchen by user Amin Anamanoic Adam. I uh, don't know. How, I'm sorry. I probably butchered your last name. Um, but this basically is uh, similar. You can download this and basically select which custom mods you want. It's a little bit different than doing it in the web browser, but it's a similar type of thing. So uh, these are, again, some more mods. It's some pictures here. You've got the custom font which, you know, that, that font probably actually looks a little bit better than the font that's uh, in the radio by default. Um, here's another one, another custom font, which looks kind of cool. Uh, the uh, digits as well, what's that VCR font? Custom boot screen, so just like a Nokia 3310, you can change the default um, boot screen so you can load, uh, put a bitmap together and put your own boot screen in as well. There is a lot more mods here that you can do and this radio is just becoming more and more open source really, really quickly, which is really, really cool. What mods would you like to see for the Quan Chang and which ones are you actually going to install on your radio? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video so far and it's proved valuable, then please give it a thumbs up. So does this radio really provide good value for money? Well, they're currently, I think, around about $30 or $40 on Amazon at the moment. There is a link in the description below if you'd like to pick up one of these so you can do a bit of modification and a little bit of experimentation. And I've also answered a whole heap of other questions and shown you some of the other things that you can do with this radio in a bunch of videos that will appear right here.